In this video, we review Intune device compliance policies for Windows clients. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. This is the continuation of my series on Intune. Coming up, we'll configure a compliance policy for our users and devices. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, and hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD. Also subscribe to my newsletter. Links to all that goodness is below. Back to it, there are two parts for compliance policies in Intune. There are compliance policy settings. These are tenant-wide settings that dictate how devices without a policy are handled and how long a device can be offline before falling out of compliance. Next, we have device compliance policies. These are platform-specific rules that define items like minimum allowed operating system, password policy for mobile devices, and if disk encryption, firewalls, and antivirus are required. These device compliance policies can be assigned to users, so it's applied to MDM-enabled users when they log into the device, or we can assign the policy to devices. This is used when the device doesn't have a dedicated user, an Azure Virtual Desktop Session Host, for example. We also define actions for non-compliance. We can mark the device as non-compliant, so we can identify a potential problem. We can also send an email to the user and to a distribution group, Intune Admins, for example. We can also retire the device after a specific number of days of non-compliance. Coming up, we're going to create a compliance policy on a new Intune tenant. If you're just getting started with Intune, be sure to check out my playlist for more information. Let's jump into the portal to get started. Here we are in the Intune portal. Let's start with the tenant compliance policy settings. These are a couple of settings that apply to the entire tenant. Let's go to devices, compliance policies, and compliance policy settings. We have two options. First is how we mark a device with no compliance policy assigned. Right now the default is compliant. This tenant has no device compliance policy assigned at all. So all devices will show as compliant. The default is not what we want to use going forward. Left this way, if a device had no firewall enabled and outdated antivirus, but no policy was applied, it would show as compliant. We want to switch this to not compliant. Now the device will need a policy and meet the policy settings before it's marked as compliant. This is especially useful if compliance is part of a conditional access policy. Next is the number of days a device can be compliant without checking in. The allowed values are 1 to 120 and the default is 30. For this example, we'll leave it at 30. But consider your organization with this setting. 30 days may seem sufficient, but in many cases it may not be. Parental leave that's longer than 30 days, employee furlough, seasonal workers, or extended vacations could move a device to non-compliant after the 30 days has passed. Once you've changed the settings, click Save. Next, we'll create a notification template. We use this template in an upcoming device policy, so we'll create it first. From Devices, Compliance Policies, go to Notifications. Create a notification. Give it a name. This one we'll call Compliance Notification. We have the option to add the company logo in the header and the company name in the contact information in the email. This information can be found in Tenant Administration. Under Customization, we can edit to update the settings. Update it as you'd like. For this example, we'll leave it as is and go back to creating the notification template. For this example, we'll disable everything but the company name. We'll go next to Notification Message Templates. For this example, we'll select the locale. English United States for this example. And we'll add a subject. Again, this is an email template. So for this example, we'll use Device Out of Compliance. We'll add a message. And of course, you can add whatever is appropriate for your organization. Finally, I'll mark this as a default. We can add more as needed. For this example, I'll go next to review and create and create. 
Now that we have our notification template, let's move on to create a device policy. Let's go to Policies under Device Compliance Policies. We'll create a new policy. We need to select a platform. This one is for Windows 10 and newer. We'll create. Give it a name. We'll call this one Windows 10 11 Compliance. And a description as well. Base Windows 10 and 11 Compliance Policy. We'll go next to Compliance Settings. At the top, we can create a custom compliance settings if we need. We'll skip this for this example. For device health, we can select if BitLocker is required, as well as secure boot and code integrity. We'll use all for this policy. Let's go to device properties. We can set a minimum and maximum version of the OS for desktop and mobile devices. I'll put a link to Windows release information below if you want to target a minimum or maximum version. For this example, we'll use Windows 10 21H2. The version number is 10.0.19044.1. It has to be in the major minor build version number format. No maximums and we'll leave the mobile device blank. We can also specify specific OS builds. Builds allows us to specify a specific version a version with all the updates, for example, instead of just a minimum version. Next, let's go to Configuration Manager Compliance. This option lets us set compliance based on Configuration Manager. This lab doesn't have Configuration Manager, or what I used to call SCCM, so we'll leave it set to Not Configured. We'll go to System Security. We have a lot of security-related settings here. Most are self-explanatory and I'm not going to review each one. Let's look at password. Require a password to unlock mobile devices only applies to mobile devices and we're working with Windows 10 and 11 here, so we don't need to configure this setting. Password policies are set in either Azure AD or Active Directory Domain Services for our user accounts. We can configure firewall, a TPM chip, antivirus, and spyware. This example will use the first three. We can require Defender Anti-Malware, let's set that. We'll also require real-time protection for this. Finally, if we're using Microsoft Defender for Endpoint in this environment, we can set the minimum score here. Let's go to Next. Now we have the actions for non-compliance. The first default setting will mark the device as non-compliant. We can set how long it'll take for a device to be marked as non-compliant if it fails to match the policy. Zero is immediate. We can also add a notification if the device becomes non-compliant. Under Message Template, this is where we set the notification template we configured earlier. We'll select that. We can also add an email notification group to send the notice to as well. Finally, we can add the device to a retired device list. This is helpful to enable if the device doesn't become compliant after a given number of days, let's say 15. Let's go next to assignments. We have a section where we can include groups and another where we can exclude groups. We can target a user or device group. If we target the user group, the setting will apply to the user on any MDM-enabled device they log into. Use a device group if we want the policy to apply to a device no matter who signs in. This could be an AVD session host or a shared device. We could also add all users and then exclude specific users with the exclude group. For this example, we'll add a group. This lab has a group of MDM-enabled users. We'll select that. We'll go to Next. And if that all looks good, we'll click Create. That creates and assigns the policy. We created the policy and we'll verify the status next. Before we do, be aware that changes in Intune are not immediate. The client will check for updates at different intervals, some at login, some every few minutes, some once a day. Restarting may help. It took several minutes for the policy to apply and update 
and the computers we'll take a look at next. Speaking of that, let's take a look now. Let's go to Devices, then Windows. We can see the compliance status here. Let's open the first compliant device and go to Device Compliance and the policy we created earlier. All settings are showing compliant, that's good. Let's go back to Devices. We'll open the device that's non-compliant. Go to Device Compliance. Open the policy we just created. The client shows it's missing BitLocker. We set the option to require BitLocker and this device doesn't have that enabled on the local drive. That's good, that's telling us there's a problem with this device. That is how to create, apply, and review a compliance policy in Intune. I hope that helps you better understand how to create compliance policies in Intune. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.